Isn't it an incredible thing that all we need is Jesus Christ? Isn't it amazing that we don't need other people showing us? Or we don't need anything other than the Holy Spirit to guide us into everything. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful that the Lord is everything. And that He supplies everything. That we don't have to go out, you know. You want to go to school. You can't just go and... You know, you have to buy the curriculum or something. Or when you go to university, you can't just show up at physics class. You got to buy the textbooks first. I'm so thankful that you don't have to do none of that to come to Christ. You don't have to come with a Bible in hand and go to Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful. Just just somebody witnessing to you and telling you what Jesus Christ did on the cross is enough to turn your whole life around. Just that right there is enough to get you to pray to Him. Once you prayed with Him and once you've given your life to Christ, the rest, I mean, the rest is history, so to speak. It's an incredible thing. You know, I once, I was going around to churches, you know, these buildings and just talking with the pastors of these churches and asking them, you know, why why is why is the body of Christ divided? Why is there a church across the street and there's a church here and you're not you know together glorifying Jesus? Oh, it's cuz of doctrinal issues and did little things like this and whatever and they're so quick to be like you can go over to that church if you want yet every church thinks they're the only one going to heaven it's crazy like they don't care about souls at all and you know it it just there's this one baptist church and you know the 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 pastor there was talking about I went to his service a couple of times, you know, and just listened to him, and I talked to him after it, and got into talking to him about, you know, um, about what God does, and that he doesn't need a Bible to do it, you know, and he wasn't getting what I was saying, because we've been so brainwashed into thinking, like, well, how do you know how to be a Christian without your Bible? you know, type of thinking, like Jesus Christ is to be studied and not walked with, like the Holy Spirit is to learn a lesson and not just have him guide you into all truth, you know, our faith can only go so far, it seems, and and I was trying to tell him that, you know, if there was a man that was on an island, do you think Jesus Christ can appear to him, do you think Jesus Christ can show himself to him and teach him? You know, and it was so sad because the senior pastor leading people, mind you, you know, supposed to be a shepherd of a flock, was telling people, or he was telling me that, or yeah, he was telling me that, you know, well, I believe that God would send someone there, or that I believe God would send someone with a Bible to give to him, and I was like, man, thank God that thinking wasn't around in Abraham's day. Or Moses day, you know, there was no, no talking or, or think, or, I mean, you know, no thinking about it and no, no Bible to study, no scriptures to go. It was just, Abraham believed God, told him to move, leave, leave your homeland and go here. And he did. And it was counted him for righteousness because he believed God. Moses. No one came to Moses with a book and handed it to him. And he said, oh, Lord, right? He just got Moses' attention to burning bush and talked to him. Why can't God be the same today? How come Jesus Christ has changed so much that unless you have a Bible in hand or someone to teach you that Bible or someone to teach you Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic or what have you, why can't you have a relationship with Christ? That's the great news. All that's fake. You can. Jesus Christ is alive and real. He cannot be manufactured from a group of people in their minds. He cannot be maintained and contained in, in a building. 
he cannot be contained from a book in a book, you know, from cover to cover in a book. He's alive. He's everything. He's not even in heaven. He's outside of it because he created heaven. But that's where we're going to be with him. It's crazy to think that God can't even be contained to heaven. You know, we all sit here and we think like, oh, yeah, it's going to be great to be up there in heaven. With, But you remember, he created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> it's just, it's so wild. Praise God, you know, that he's everything, everything. And not dwindled down to having somebody to teach us. I thank God for our brothers, sisters in other countries that don't have. I mean, look at China. Majority of them can't have a Bible. A lot of them don't have a Bible. All over the world. You're going to tell me God's not working in their life? Yeah, right. You're going to tell me they don't hear God's voice? Don't think so. You're not going to tell me that they're not Christian. They're not my brothers and sisters, and they're not our brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ can do anything. If he can get a sinner to turn his whole life around, Jesus Christ can do anything. He doesn't need a book. I prayed to Jesus Christ just like the rest of you brothers and sisters. We have prayed to Jesus Christ and repented and gave our lives to him. I didn't drop my own blood on a Bible. I didn't sign a, my life away to God in, in a church on some prayer card. I went to him and I said, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Here's everything that's wrong with me. I have all these sins and I would love for them to be gone. I don't know how you're going to do it, but Lord, with the best of my everything that I know, I have faith. Turned everything around. Turned everything around. Praise Jesus. Because I had already been reading the Bible and the scripture looking for one secret code word for 10 years. Didn't do anything. Praise God that he is real. Praise his spirit that he has left as comforters, counselors, helpers, teacher that we had that guides us. Someone had to guide the people that wrote that Bible. You know who that is? Jesus Christ. So you don't have to think that you need a Bible to know Jesus Christ. You go to Jesus Christ. He puts his word inside of you. That word just ended up getting written down in the Bible. It's not God's word. God's word is what's inside of us. What was inside Paul was God's word that he wrote. So the word is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Word comes into us, and that Word we are able to explain out or able to write down. The Word was never meant to be contained inside of a book. Praise Jesus Christ. And I pray, brothers and sisters, for you, that you stay strong. I pray that God's will be done in your life, and I pray that you can bring everyone, everyone you can to Christ, your family, everybody, co-workers, people you don't know, homeless people, your enemies, everybody, for Jesus Christ's glory. Don't do it for them. Do it for Jesus. You bring that person that hates you to Christ for Jesus Christ. For his glory. Because we love Jesus Christ so much, we want everyone in this world to love him. If your hatred and your animosity towards somebody is more than bringing them to Christ because your love for him, you have work to do. We do this for Jesus Christ to give him all the gifts and presents and people and everything for him for what he's done and who he is. We don't not bring someone to Christ because we don't like him. It's sad that all we pray for is our family. 
All we pray for is those that are close to us, and if nothing else, us, because we're selfish. Your prayer can go on all day, every day, if you're doing it right. Then you can really pray without ceasing. You have, think you could pray, literally, for everyone you've ever met in your life, if you can remember them. Old co-workers, old high school teachers, your first fight, your first boyfriend or girlfriend, your first whatever. Everybody that's ever come into your life is worth praying for. It's not a lack of ammunition for prayers that we have. It's a lack of heart, a lack of a heart like Christ that we have, which keeps our prayers short. Don't let it happen anymore. For Christ's sake, fight. It's not the time to be lazy. Fight. May Jesus guide you and fight through you. God bless you, brothers and sisters.